We haven't forgotten you, we really haven't. I know it might seem like we have, but we've just been very, very busy and that's all there is to it really. <sighs> the boat's a bit of a mess. Um, we have a bit of a project going on at the minute. But I thought I'd just bring you up to date and explain why we're having difficulty getting videos out and things like that. You know, just what we're generally up to. <sighs> so what I've been doing up here is um, this board that covers up the um, curtains. Uh, these have worn, taking them in and out with an upcomer time, so they just need busy filling up the epoxy and redoing again. <sighs> the chaos in the cabin is caused by Gaynor and myself. We have decided to have all the cabin foam redone. So Gaynor's got the seat backs and the end cushions away and they've gone off to a foam company in Newton Ards. We've taken the big cushions down yesterday. They've been measured up. We hope to have all the foam next week. Get that installed. Um, she's also left me a pile of washing up to do. Top tip, if you spill yoghurt into the fridge, clean it up straight away. Don't leave it in there to evolve and grow into something unrecognisable in the bottom of your fridge. Because down there, we've got something going on. And we're just going to maybe leave it for a bit longer. So I've got the washing up to do. I've got all these things to do. But like I say, I'm here to explain to you what's going on. A lot of people have asked about how my mum's getting on because that's what occupies us. Um, She's older, she's getting frailer, she's got galloping arthritis, she just needs us there on a fairly frequent basis to do things. So basically three or four days a week, we're over at her place, like which is like 23, 24 miles away, um, doing what we have to do just to help her out through the day. Um, quite often the following day we're <laughs> usually pretty exhausted and <laughs> trying to recover from it. And then we've got boat work and we've got um, our little seasonal jobs that we do over the winter, we've extended them into the summer. Um, we've had friends and guests come over from the land of the Red Dragon. We then sent them off up to the Kingdom of the Thistle where there's lots and lots of whiskey and particularly this spot where there is lots and lots of whiskey and recommended that they sample it. They've been there a while. They haven't, the boats haven't moved again so we suspect they're making a good dent on getting through those whiskies. There's only another two or three thousand of them to go so they might be there for the season. Who knows? Um, speaking of the season, outside's pretty manky. And that's another reason that we're having trouble getting the sailing videos done. The weather has not been brilliant. We've had two good sailing days in about the last two weeks. And on some of those sailing days, my mother picks up the phone and away we go. So there we are. That's what we're doing at the minute. That's what we're up to. Um, there's a couple of things we have got planned. We want to do them out in the lock and bring them to you. We, we think they'll be instructional because we're hoping to learn from them. So perhaps other people will too. Other than that, it's just full on crazy at the minute. What we need to do is get more things in place for my mother so that she can have more support to do things she wants and the way she wants to do them. And that way we get more time to go sailing. But in the meantime, our short stop is to go back into the archive and pull out the early videos, completely re-edit them, restring them, retract them, things like that. Try and make a slightly different episode because not everybody goes back and looks at our early episodes. When we did them, we had about 500 subscribers. We have now got heading for 5,000 subscribers. So we're willing to bet there's a lot of people haven't seen the early episodes. Um, looking back at them, I can see that the editing and the noise and the rest of it, everything, the way we did everything was very, very different. But I'm hoping that with a, a more experienced take on the editing and things like that, they can be enjoyable, even for people who have seen them before. So with that, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on and see how we go. So I think the last place we left you was in just north of Dublin and we just arrived there. It's time to have our anchor disaster. We've covered this one extensively in the channel so a lot of you will have seen these clips before. But here they are in context. Enjoy. And while you enjoy them and have a good time, I'll get on with the washing up and then I'll also deal with the great chocolate crisis of 2024. <laughs> because the chocolate box is empty.
right, Gaynor? What just went wrong? Uh, we had this beautiful passage plan all sorted. We were going to go to the scaries. But unfortunately, the weather is just not with it. Because um, we've currently got uh, wind coming from the north, which means that the scaries is going to be a leeward shore. So, plans go out the window! Today's passage plan is a very simple one. We're going from here to here. And it's not very far. It's about three or four nautical miles. And there's next to no wind and there's very little tide and we can see where we're going before we leave. So that's pretty much the passage planning done. Oh, golly. I don't seem to be able to get anything right. I'd really do try my little best, but uh, we were pulling up the anchor this morning and um, we'd got um, a ball on it so that we could see where the ben, ben, um, thing was, the anchor was. And uh, Bev said, one thing I don't want you to do is to drive over the bloody ball. So I went back to get the anchor, uh, so the um, boat hook ready and by the time I came back, uh, basically we'd gone over the ball. Um, basically our moral of this story is we've got to get everything ready and just, just so annoying. So what we're going to have to do is We've called for assistance again. Um, uh, we've got the mooring ball off the uh, anchor, so now it's just stuck. Um, and we've dropped the anchor again, so that we are at least in uh, we're relatively s safe, as in we've stopped. <sighs> but I've no idea how this one's going to end up, but. I've not done everything right again. Uh, that's what sailing sometimes is about. Steep learning curve. Somewhere over there a boat's... Co Nothing, I'm just talking. Somewhere over there a boat's coming to rescue us. Give us a tow. <laughs> okay, give us a tow. It's a cracking dawn. Absolutely lovely. Still have issues with this wonderful yellow line just underneath us. And uh, we've got the anchor down. We're in one metre of water. There's nothing really else we can do, but we are at least safe. Oh, and there's the uh, uh, rescue coming to... Bev's just brought the other lines across. He, they're going to give us our their line, so uh, we've got rid of ours. Thank you very much. <sighs> okay, gosh, you're loose, this is our wake at the moment, and the only reason we have that wake <laughs> is Odie's. Oh What's this? Yes, yeah, somewhere in there, we're being towed of a fouled prop. nerve-wracking having somebody underneath your boat <laughs> sorting it all out and all Bev can see say is there's loads of bubbles down there so oh, hopefully it's all right <sighs> yeah you can just about see the harbour just there more lobster pots. Up here. Yep, more lobster pots.
It's a great feature. So what are you doing? Along, <laughs> I'm trying, somewhere in there, there is grease. Yep. Oil. Because on the way here, our um, wimp seized. So that means we've got to find the oil and it's in the locker. So I'm getting the fenders out so I can get to it. And that's the reason Gainer is hanging fenders on a boat hundreds of yards from other boats in the middle of a mooring field. Beverly and I moved our boat this morning. <laughs> anyway, we moved our boat this morning um, because we were on a mooring ball. Um, but at uh, about six o'clock this morning, um, our anchor alarm went off, which basically meant that Jet Beverly jumped out of bed. <laughs> and um, basically, we only had um, 50 centimetres underneath the keel and we had another 70 centimetres to go, so not really good. So uh, we moved it and we've actually anchored. So hopefully this time, this is our third anchoring, this one will go right. After all, we've run aground once and we've trapped a uh, line under on, on, on our prop once. So hopefully this anchoring will be fine. Well, not the thing you'd expect to wake up to in the morning. I don't know if it's uh, quite visible, but in the distance there, there's a boat which has uh, drifted onto the rocks during the night. It must have broke its mirroring. Um, the people at the back of it seem to be RNLI people, and that is the RNLI station, so I guess they walked to this particular one, but somebody's going to have a very, very bad day. Are we rolling? You're rolling. Okay, you're going to ask me the question then, Bev? No. You don't want to know, do you? The sad truth is I do know. I think I preferred the monsters in the bottom of the fridge to this. As you can tell, Gainer's just come back and she's got all the stuff to the phone place and she's got it all priced up and all I can say to people is if you want to redo foam and things, talk to your bank manager first. I think I'll be talking to this box of Shiraz instead. So what was the damage? Well, according to you. Yep. And I just don't know... for the foam? Yeah, just, just for the foam, the bit that goes inside. Because we're keeping the covers, the fabric is fine. Does it include VAT? I should damn well hope so. But I'll find out. So... £827 for a couple of chunks of foam. Yep. Eight two seven. I'll get the glasses. Yeah. That's a lot of money. I don't normally swear, but... I mean, people think boat stuff is expensive. This is not boat foam. You know, this isn't marine foam. We're not getting it from a Chandler's. This is land-based foam that we're getting from a land-based company that does land-based things and is therefore, according to Sailing Wisdom, Cheap. Just thought I'd throw that out there. This is cheap. Blood and sand, girl. Yeah. 827. Just for the foam. A bit of a damn good foam. Well, Beverly and I have uh, discussed our um, chair issue and uh, the conclusion is um, we're going to just do the bottoms. Um, it's still going to cost us five fifty, but do you know what? At least we'll have, uh, we won't have saggy bottoms anymore. <laughs>